Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows and movies. I am your host, Ricky. Today, we are talking about WandaVision Season 1, Episode 2, called Don't Touch That Dial. And I sure, surely didn't touch that dial. Uh, I was thoroughly entertained uh, with this episode. It did not disappoint at all uh disclaimer this uh these two episodes episode one and episode two of the miniseries uh wandavision were released on the same day i took the decision to review them individually um, upon a lot of deliberation whether to create a review channel or not and i decided to put that much more pressure on myself by reviewing a very popular tv uh miniseries or streaming miniseries on t on top of the movies that i work on every day to review and to try to put out to you guys so i decided why not you know start a channel and put every obstacle in front of me so here we are so without further ado the review for episode two was i thought it was awesome bye thank you like subscribe and until next time no just kidding i thought it was good it's episode two i mean they're 30 minutes they're pretty short to to uh to begin with and um there's a ton of easter eggs it's uh fast paced i love that about these first two episodes uh they're fast paced the comedy the humor uh the actors in both uh episode one and and episode two uh, uh, uh wanda and vision the actors portraying them are uh, the, the the chemistry they have together the way they're playing off one another uh is great it's, it comes off uh you could see it uh, on screen and it's leading to this amazing uh, uh, storytelling and it's because their acting is so believable and so uh, amazing and the way they're delivering their lines and working off of each other is is something that needs to be uh, admired uh, uh, respected, uh, rewarded, and we need to cherish that kind of level of professionalism to their craft. And after looking at episode two, that becomes even a, a bigger statement. And now we're, we're starting to, we saw some of the supporting cast in episode one, you know, it was very, it was smaller compared to what we're seeing now. Yes, we're, we're seeing some recurring characters in these episodes. Uh, but in episode two, we get introduced to a, a lot more of the community of the neighborhood that Wanda and Vision are reciting. But the actors portraying these characters, amazing also. They're the way they are playing off of the lead actors and actresses uh, and the way they are delivering their lines and 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 acting out their roles is 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 just adding to the enjoyment in believing in believing these uh, these people these characters that we are being uh, introduced to right and the the fact that they're hitting it out of the park with their acting skills is again just a testament to the professionalism that and and craftsmanship to their art form and again not just the actors the producer uh directors costume design set design the whole team uh of wandavision you know that, that they're putting this on hats off to them they're giving us some grade a meat uh production here and entertainment value the best thing coming out besides all the the mystery and questions and and theories and all that stuff the best thing that came out of episode two was doppelganger beard or mustache ross i think that was the best thing i don't know if it trended i'm not that hip right now 
with keeping up in Twitter. Uh, I don't know if it if it trended or not. I would have hoped so, and I would have been I would be disappointed in the internet if it didn't. The moment that face hit that screen. That's all I thought. I was like, is that, is that Ross? You know, is that Ross on, in this show? Like, you know, um, like the actor, like, it, I can't remember his name. Even the same thing when he came out in, in the OJ one, I kept on, con I kept on just saying, you know, Ross. And that's when you're just typecast and maybe it, it's just me. I should take more, 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 more professionalism, I guess, and, and learning the actor's actual name. But anyways, uh that one when i saw him that's and that's all i could see throughout the whole rest of that episode every time he came up and even the part when he was in the in the talent show when he was playing his piano or where he was sitting in with the rest of the townspeople all i thought is like wow this is they this is you know the, the this guy looks so much like the actor that plays Ross from Friends. Like, oh, my, oh, like that's crazy. And I don't know if it was by, if it was deliberate, if they recognized it too. I mean, you couldn't not recognize that. So it's hard for me to say or think that they didn't uh, uh, put that in on purpose. And given the fact that it seems that we're moving through the ages, not only through the ages, through sitcoms and whatever is going on, wouldn't it be funny if we got to the 90s and lo and behold, there is, you know, a friends kind of a, of an episode that we're going to get maybe here coming up shortly, which would fit why that, that guy looks awfully similar, uh, to Ross Geller. Um, who knows, right? You know, but, uh, it's definitely, that was the, the most noteworthy. Yes, I know there was all the secret, you know, there was more questions and the beekeeper and uh, on a side note, this is a horror story, right? Like someone tell me different that I'm not watching a horror story for, for I, I don't remember comedies dealing with like choking or you know jump scaring me with the whole uh, uh helicopter and when she went outside and it was in color and the jump scare like i don't remember comedies or sitcoms uh, uh doing this to me so this is this seems like a horror movie and even that where where dotty one of the characters in this thing where where uh, she's talking to Wanda and then we hear that radio static coming in through the radio and you hear the music getting all crazy and scary. And of course, like you've seen in our every freaking movie and, and in some shows, you know, she gets freaked out and she squeezes and breaks the glass in her hand. And of course, she, of course she gets uh, uh, cut and we see the blood, but just the scene is like, oh, scary. And, and you know, the, with, the, with the dark and, and uh, music, I was like, okay, this this is a horror, you know, uh, like a, a horror comedy that we're seeing, which is, uh, I guess, not really now. I thought we saw more of those like in the 2000s, like the horror comedy movies. But this seems to be that there's like a bit of comedy mixed with with horror, um, whether that's deliberate. I'm sure it's deliberate. Uh, I don't I personally don't know the the meanings to to them. So I thought the acting was superb. I'm, I'm loving the parodies of these episodes, what they mean. I, 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 I can't wait to find out alongside with you with you guys. But the parodies having vision there, having Wanda there, I almost want to see like Spider-Man pop up or like Iron man or you know captain america hawkeye someone just popping in you know doing these cameos it's a fun little idea who how they came up with it i don't know um but uh i give this episode two i give it five out of five wanda 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 and visions uh, together. Uh, i i thought it was brilliant thank you guys for listening and watching and that's a wrap.